my mindset is always like, it's fine. Like if it comes down to it, I'll just like take out my entire 401k for like, for my good school. <laughs> my name is Dooley and you're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. Well, my dream is to go to culinary school in France. So hmm. that's even more expensive because then you have to take account like the living costs while you're there. Um, yeah. And you can't work while you're there, right? Because like they're not going to like sponsor you a work visa while you're there. So, yeah. um, so you have to take that into account. So like even if I were there for like three months, I would still have to save like a good bit of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So plus school, <laughs> plus school. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I've been thinking about it a lot and I was like considering also doing it in New York because they have like good culinary schools there as well, but still goes like, it's still the same issue, right. With the money, except for the fact that like, I would be able to like work there during the day, which would be awesome. But then the, like there goes the balance, right. So like if I had work from like, let's say like eight to five and then the culinary school is like a night class type of deal. And it started at like seven and ended at like 11 p.m. I actually looked this up. I wouldn't have a life. <laughs> like I simply wouldn't have a life. So I mean, I don't like, honestly, I like what I'm doing right now. Um, and like, might as well save up for something I really will enjoy. Um, I really did consider the whole New York thing and like doing cooking school at night, but I want to do it the way I've always like dreamed of doing it. So yeah. I think mm-hmm. it'll be worth it to just like take the time to actually save up the money. And then once I have the money, just go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, no complaints on my life right now. I feel like I feel like I, everything is going well. And I like my job so much better than like my previous job, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and even like, just like looking at like the smaller things in life, like my previous job, I was just like talking to people. No, like nothing bad about talking to people, but not what I want to be doing. <laughs> um, stress me out a lot. Um, and I feel like this job like allows me to like talk to more international like mm-hmm. clients and like actually have like the French exposure and like use like like some language skills if like just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and like they'll also come in handy for my cooking school. So I feel like everything, I don't know, it sounds cliche, but like happens for a reason. And like when the time comes, I'll be able to do exactly what I want, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, even the kind of creating the space for it too, like now, I mean, we have all the friends here in Denver hanging out yeah. with everyone, but then, yeah, if you're slowly taking the paychecks and kind of just chunking a section away and sort of have that thought of, you know, okay, maybe I would be else. lying to you if I was do- like, if I was tell- <laughs> telling <laughs> telling you I'm doing that right now, because that's simply not 20 true. bucks, 20 bucks a paycheck. <laughs> Toss it in there. Fucking- no, I know my mindset, like I simply, <laughs> I like, I work in finance, like, but my budgeting skills are so awful. Um, <laughs> I work in, that's like, I, <laughs> like I don't have a budget. <laughs> I simply don't. Um, my mindset is always like, it's fine. Like if it comes down to it, I'll just like take out my entire 401k for like, <laughs> for my cooking school. Yeah, there we go. Let's fucking put it all on the line. Let's go. <laughs> Tax that shit and fucking <laughs> get penalized a shit ton. Yeah. <laughs> get tax, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to save money, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also like knowing to the, the kind of balance of, oh no, I want to do that in the future, but then like, well, maybe, I don't know. I kind of also want to, you know, live while we're young in a way. And I'm, I'm yeah, no, it definitely makes it harder. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree because like most of the money that I spend on is for food. Yeah. Right. And like, <laughs> if I want to like go to cooking school one day, I feel like I should at least like have a grasp on like the basic oh, yeah. stuff. And like, I, I really enjoy it. So hmm. like, I have no issues spending money on food. Hmm. And if it was anything else, like, for example, like this chair, yeah. <laughs> it's just like completely broken and it's been broken for like six months maybe more and it probably costs like forty dollars to like replace it but I just like I would never just oh not never I need to do it soon because my back is hurting but like I have a harder time like actually purchasing a chair rather than like buying like 150 dollars of groceries so, like yeah, that's yeah, 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 so yeah, easy yeah. for me or just like ordering food it's like forty dollars is just like on the grand yeah. scheme of things for food is like nothing to me but if it was for a chair I just like would never consider it you know that's almost part of it too though is kind of knowing where 
like your values lie with stuff I'm the same thing with yeah like the music and speaker stuff is I'll go in and even to your point of eating out if something's 950 versus like 1280 like yeah. wait a sec one sec what's this menu trying to do to me there's some <laughs> going on but we're talking about two dollars at the end of the day me spending three minutes to go through the menu and realize which one but at the same time getting um like i just recently bought a sub base for my little studio set up here uh-huh. it was expensive it was like yeah. a <laughs> yeah. fucking flight to europe expensive yeah. but at the same time like well what i really love is the experience of listening to music of creating it of messing with sound and if i feel like i'm missing a chunk of that with the uh, the low frequency <laughs> yeah. then you know how can i how can I keep going forward pretending like it's not something that I'm care so much about? So I feel like it's good to have that with. No, food. exactly. I think it's like money and- it's about making the sacrifices, right? Like you can't just like be that impulsive, not you personally, but like yeah. me, like I can't be that impulsive and I like everything I do. Like I have to pick and choose like what are the things I really like value in life and like choose to spend my money on those mm-hmm. things. But it's a hard balance when you're trying to save up for something but that something is like what makes you spend money if yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. you know <laughs> so with with that have you done any kind of crazy chef ups recently I mean obviously we do our little collabs on yeah all the food and hitting kind of a strange meal but have you done anything recently that's sort of um kind of I mean I've been with my family a bunch in the past few weeks uh, my mom actually just left but she was in Washington for like about a month and a half um and I hadn't seen her in like two years which was insane um yeah but uh so me my sister and my mom were all there together and it was really nice to just like get a chance to like cook with them and like spend time with them um one thing I would actually we cooked a lot of Indonesian food we cooked a bunch of food but like one thing that stood out to me was like this master class and I was just so shocked by like the simplicity of the class itself. Um, It was insane. Like I used to think that like the more ingredients, the better, but this class was just like a, it was just a salmon recipe, basic salmon recipe. Um, The only ingredients were oil, salmon and salt. Like you wouldn't think that like taking technique makes like the biggest of difference, but it was absolutely insane. So the, I, I, I don't know if I should go into it. Go, go into it. I want to learn. Okay. Learn. So the recipes for like a crispy salmon skin. Um, and I had no clue about this, but in order to get like the crispiest of salmon skin, you need to take all the, all the water out of like the skin itself and with like a knife and all this black gunk comes out of the skin. And like before this, I like I had no clue. I like whenever I like I fried salmon, of course I like descaled it because you don't want to be eating the scales. But I never like noticed that there's like this black film that comes out of the skin if you don't clean it. Um, I mean, it was, it's always tasted fine to me, but it made the biggest difference. Like it was so tasty and crispy. Um, I'm not sure what my point is, but oh, <laughs> it was really good and that, it was so that, simple. That is that is the point though about even with food itself, it's, um, I was talking to my brother with this, actually, one of the things I realized coming back from, uh, I did a trip in Peru, and mm-hmm. I had kind of realized within the food there, and the whole spiritual side of that journey that I went yeah. on, um, food is such an important piece to my life, yet I do find myself cutting corners in terms of ingredients, or, mm-hmm. you know, and it's fine to find deals, but there's a difference between when you're actually I'm spending so much time cooking and creating and then having a follow-up meal for leftovers that extra little spend to get the right ingredients and to point the simplicity at which the creation actually occurs and just these subtle techniques about it um that is the world the difference and it's also that next level up is it's working with what you have to create the best thing possible because that's also what at the end of the day you're cooking to eat it and then to yeah. share it and to have other people experience it so i think no um, I completely agree. I mean, like in Denver, I'm so used to just getting like 
not the cheapest, but like the most, one of the most affordable like options in terms of like, like fish. I, the one thing that I can't stand though, I like, I really like, I've tried it is the color added salmon. Like mm -hmm. that, I don't know why it just gives, it just, I, I, it freaks me out so a little bit. I'm um, kind of the frozen tilapia section yeah. with breaded. I love, I have just discovered that as a great excuse to throw a thing on the pan and you put it in like fish tacos or pasta yeah. and um, it, it kills. Cause also in Denver here, you get the fresh fish thing. I, it's just I've kind of lost trust in, in general. I know. I'm like, I'd rather actually buy it frozen because you can still. Get because honestly, it's not, it's not less fresh. Like yeah. it's, it's still good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the color added just freaks me out a little bit because Sally, my roommate, Sally, um, and I <laughs> um, looked up a photo of like the, salmon before the color was added and it was gray it yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. it was gray and it just makes me like my mom doesn't ever eat like animals slash like fish that she doesn't know where like it came from type of deal and that's just like her but like this just makes me think about that a little bit more you know like what do they feed the fish that it becomes yeah. gray. Like salmon is naturally pink. Like, what do you feed it that it becomes gray? But anyway, um, so <laughs> avoid, avoid color added salmon for me. Um, but it was nice being like with my family and being able to splurge a little bit more and like the, the better ingredients and like make good food. Yeah, it was fun. I actually did uh, literally last night. Same thing of, I kind of also randomly, my YouTube like recommend me little fish. You're not fit. Fuck the fish. <laughs> recommend, me, recommend me food things. Yeah. And I saw a fish thing recently. And also, when so I did some uh, travel with my family, and my dad is hyper intense about his just veggies, lean meat, mm -hmm. and fish diet. So we started having a little bit more fish and shrimp. And um, <laughs> without getting too into this story, I had a fall <laughs> off of shrimp for about okay. eight years of my life. But coming back into it now is I'm like, holy shit, it's got such its own like, power punched flavor and you just shift it in other ways. So with like chicken, for example, you know, it's got the, it's almost got a kind of a more of a blank slate and then you can yeah. flavor it to take whatever it needs. Shrimp itself already punches through into like, mm -hmm. shrimp flavor. And then you can kind of lean it a little bit more Asian, a little bit more Mexican, yeah. Italian with the garlic, like whatever it is. But, um, yeah, last night, same kind of thing. Last time I was at the grocery store, I got a bunch of the frozen shrimp. I was like, I never, ever purchased frozen shrimp. Let's just see what happens here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we did it. Um, and then actually, yeah, Tina came over and then we were with uh, Hubert and Pete, my other roommates. And so we made this whole um, like Asian sesame lettuce wrap yeah. shrimp taco sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, it was just, it was so good. It was ridiculously easy. All it was was adding we basically made our own sauce which was yeah the chili and soy and garlic yeah. and ginger basically did that cook the shrimp in it and just put it on little lettuce wraps and it's like mind-boggling how it's like Easy. prep time 15 or prep yeah. and cook 15 20 minutes and literally mixing some things doing it um mm -hmm. but i've kind of found whether it be on youtube literally talking to you going and like through some travels I've done or even just going and cooking with other people as you get reminded like why the fuck have I not been doing that um and so that's also what I love about it is each person has their own subtle twist to how they do yeah. things and then you start to pick up different flavors and techniques or whatever it might be no I I agree I think that's the biggest thing for me like if I go to a restaurant mm -hmm. my ultimate my ultimate judging question is can I make this at home yeah, yeah yeah yeah. and if I can then I'm never gonna go back to the restaurant I actually that's <laughs> I'm just I know not gonna order that specific dish at that restaurant because if I can make it at home then like what's the point you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just <laughs> I found it so my statement that I actually say to the roommates is I would pay for this so when I make a meal okay. I yeah. do it and I like take a bite it's sometimes it's good like at the end of the day it's fine when you cook food yeah food especially at a medium or above level you're like all right this is good but I've hit this new thing where I'm like I would fucking pay for this pay for versus this, yeah. I take a bite and I'm like, ah, like I wouldn't serve this at a restaurant so that's <laughs> one of my new thing is lesser of judging the restaurant but in my own 
cooking is like trying stuff or even if it's the same meals I, I never follow a recipe so I always there's always random stuff yeah, yeah. to it um yeah that's that's my own kind of term of what I pay for it and then what I pay big bucks for it. That's when, mm-hmm. that's when you get something good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've done two, it's the simplest things, like a random, like a pesto chicken mushroom thing one time. Um, and I, but I got the pesto from this place Lou's in Denver and they don't even mm-hmm. sell the pesto normally. They're kind of this Italian um, little shop and they have their yeah. own stuff. But so I called in, I'm like, can I pick up your pesto? I'm like driving nearby and they're like, I think so. So they waited out and essentially I just bought it. Yeah. And then yeah, made a, like yeah mushroom thing and I actually got their parmesan too so I think it was their like really good just kind of the quality and good quality pesto yeah. and parmesan mixed in with the the mushroom and pasta and um I actually think I did a little broccoli too but it was a whole like absolutely I was just eating it and like so I, <laughs> weird yeah. weird left shift here Whenever I'm really like down to munch food, I like to take my shirt off <laughs> and go like absolutely hit on the food. But it was at that level. That's like yeah. restaurant level, like pay big for it. And if I'm taking my shirt off to eat it, that's like my fullest I'm down to munch this, like no other. So <laughs> no, I do the same. Every time I like have good food, not good food, but just like like messy food I change into like a big yeah. <laughs> just because I know I just need to be comfortable for it. especially actually especially ramen like I don't want to be in a long sleeve shirt for ramen because I get hot right. you gotta like, like I need like a nice cool t-shirt for ramen can't be white because it'll splash everywhere yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but right. I, I feel yeah, I feel you <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no I I definitely think that like a lot of people though have a hard time like getting into cooking Mm -hmm. per se like just because they find it like intimidating in a sense when really it's not it's (laughs) maybe I'm just saying that because I enjoy it it's the right theory the whole anyone can cook like that's why it's the all-time one of the all-time Disney or Pixar because I feel like sometimes restaurants make it sound more fancy it's not the restaurant's fault but like it like when you look at an expensive menu you're like, wow, this is like, this is like really hard to make. Like, mm-hmm. let's say I go to a restaurant and there's this like beautiful, there was this beautiful pesto burrata, crispy prosciutto with like mm-hmm. roast chicken and caramelized onions mm-hmm. in this like yummy focaccia bread. And at a restaurant, it costs like $16, mm-hmm. 20 maybe, like with something on the side, like a soup on the side. Yeah absolutely insane actually I understand food costs and like labor wages like that part I totally understand no disrespect but like making it at home is just so much better for me because you can customize it the way you want to mm-hmm. and like all the ingredients <laughs> literally the caramelized onions you're like all right burn the onions all right burn the prosciutto buy the <laughs> burrata it's gonna be. You're dead. not doing anything. You're <laughs> yeah, literally it's be dead. Leave, You're leave the caramelized up. onions in your, on your stove yeah. while you shower. Yeah. While you actually while you do an entire like face scrub, like facial routine. <laughs> leave yeah. it. Onions in pan. Step two: face scrub in bathroom. Step three: take onions. <laughs> Prosciutto in the oven to crisp it up. Easy. Yeah, yeah. And then just cut mm. the bread and put everything in. It's so it's so simple, you know. Like it's so. It, I feel like. I found the a best lot of things example make it seem- is actually with the um, sandwich methodology is so a lot of people who don't cook but still love food, which is actually most people I know. <laughs> a sandwich is something that's super comprehensible because it's a cold cut like turkey, roast beef or turkey yeah. and cheese, whatever. Like, oh, yeah, you just throw in the turkey, cheese, some mustard, mayo, lettuce, boom, like slap it, done. Yet for some reason, we as humans love going to get a good sub, like a quote, good sub, yeah. a good thing. When you actually break down the difference of what they're doing, it's, there's, you get the, ju- you get just as good ingredients. If you go to the grocery store to the little meat aisle and they slice you off the meat, the ingredients yeah. are actually just the same, which is why I like this. Cause sometimes the restaurants get their own fancy ingredients or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can get cheap deli meat that is just as high quality as some other thing. Um, but it has to do with the most subtle, simple, differences with how you put together a sandwich so 
picking the right loaf of bread, right? Instead of just getting the simple white, just yeah. I genuinely get a loaf of bread, cutting it, having a subtle toast to it. The turkey, like if you put it on, great. If you put it on and then you give it a little fold to like the corner and then you do that on a couple of them, all of a sudden it's got the like thick weight to it. If you decide to put the dressing on the bread layer, it'll like soak into the bread versus if you put it on the turkey layer, mm -hmm. it kind of smothers and slides. Like those are intentional decisions. And it's just those tiny little bits that collectively make the sub. And I've discovered the missing ingredient that I've not mastered is. <laughs> I'm about to. <laughs> this is the wrap of it. So if you actually okay. wrap it and compress it for a sec, it uh -huh. like soaks the ingredients together a little bit and then you cut it. And then that that's where it's, you're literally getting sandwich wrap is I think my personal Okay. Thing. But beyond that, I nail a sandwich and it's kind of confusing to some people, I think, on why it's like a sandwich. <laughs> like we just had the same thing and you look at theirs versus mine, maybe it looks prettier. Also looks affect the two, but yeah, go go on with what you're saying. Okay, no, I have a strong opinion. So I find that a lot of people are grossed out by mayo. By mayo? I don't get this personally. I love mayo, mm -hmm. but like I get you have your own opinions. But mm -hmm. when restaurants label slash sandwich shops things as aioli, yeah. <laughs> versus mayo <laughs> like a garlic aioli <laughs> yeah, it's literally mayo and garlic and yeah. lemon yeah <laughs> so if you're telling me you don't like mayo but you like aioli like you're mm. lying <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. no I and it does make every sandwich personally like I love all my sandwiches with mayo mm. and it makes it so much better or yeah, yeah, aioli yeah. you know yeah, and I say, you're literally just driving it. This is where people get scared, I think. Like, yeah, yeah we did this, then a little pesto aioli with the mushrooms. Like, whoa, pesto I don't know aioli about aiolis. I don't know about mushrooms. Pesto and yeah. mayo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we just did fat enhanced pesto. And put, <laughs> instead of tomato, we chopped a different ingredient. Not that it's like, yeah, people, I think it's all. Hey, yeah, the, you know, you're right. Like, the verbiage just makes it seem so, like, intimidating when really it's so simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your, what's your, even kind of shifting a little bit with coming from Indonesia and everything, have you seen a big food shift in yourself or coming here? Do you, like, even when you said going back with your um, mom and sister to cook, like, how has all that been? Um, I mean, it hasn't been super different because if you asked me this question when I was like 13, I would have like had very different answers because that's like when I first moved to the US. Mm. Um, but since then, like I've gotten used to everything here, to be honest. Um, I remember actually the first thing, actually, I don't know if it was one of the first things, but it was one of the first things that my stepdad told me about like the US was that they had candy aisles. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like pointed down the street, like that, like that long. And I just like could not comprehend and that because I mean I at home we have candy I'm not like making it seem as though like we don't have like grocery stores with candy because obviously like yeah Indonesia yeah. is like we have candy it's just so excessive here you know well, I'm um, familiar with the candy aisle you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm not complaining either because like here I am at night ordering like five packs of like sour gushers like yeah. on DoorDash every night but <laughs> <laughs> like, it really was just bad. such a I think that was like a really big difference for me you know um the kind of the more like processed feel or at least lack of just trusting what exactly it is you're buying what do you mean wait what's the question the the shift from walking into a grocery store and knowing it is this kind of place of food from these different maybe it'd be farmers or suppliers coming in from an hour and a half that way versus in the U.S. walking into a store with a mile long candy aisle and then food all packed food, yeah aid. that's I mean to be hard to honest trust. like at home they have it's the same thing in that sense like mm. that you can't like really grow like you can grow strawberries in Indonesia in the mountains where it's like cooler but like you can't yeah. grow like those big juicy strawberries so like they do get suppliers out of the country and it's like yeah, yeah. It's the same in that sense for the grocery stores but just like the excess you know like the amount like everything's so big like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go to the movies and you get like a soda cup that's like like bigger <laughs> than my I don't know. 
um, you would never get that at home, you know, or even like, I, I, yeah, it just I goes on. It's just like the size. I had a conversation with Rain actually the other day um, about Sprite being like the sneaky, the sneaky soda that like when you're a kid, you thought it was like, oh, it's Sprite. It's lighter. It's less sugar. You know, your parents always told you, oh, no, don't have the soda. It's bad for you. And you're like, oh, no, but like it's Sprite. It's different. And Sprite is just like one of by far like the worst, the just worst high yeah. carb, sugar, all that shit. Um, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> crazy. I also saw some, maybe we're playing some board game at some point. And oh, there's some noise going. Um, we're playing some board game and it's called like guesstimation, I think it was. And you had to try and guess on different stats on stuff. And there's a million cards and you pick from them. And but one of them was how, what's the average amount of like soda someone drinks in a day oh um, no i don't know if i want to hear <laughs> and, and in the u.s this was i think about five years ago or something yeah like, i honestly don't imagine it being that different was like an average of like subtly over three sodas a day and you start to kind of break it down like what like yeah even that no way i have this and then you kind of think and you go into middle america even not just the general standard a lot of people start their day with the diet coke and then you go yeah. and you're eating lunch and you have one and then when, wa- when you haven't normalized water into your standard drinking thing, we're always seeking out other little supplements, whether yeah. it's tea or the caffeine from coffee and the sugar from soda, whatever it is. But um, that kind of blew me away a little bit, but also yeah. it's like a sigh of uh, shit. I kind of totally believe it. So Yeah, no, I get that for me personally since college like soda just reminds me of chase and i like i (laughs) i i can't drink it as like on like a like it's not a good beverage for me to just like sip on that was really i'm so with you i I, (laughs) before when i was a little kid i used to dabble in it fell off it in high school i got on kind of this health craze yeah literally like coming back to the sprite thing just tastes like vodka (laughs) i got on this old yeah exactly it's not it doesn't taste the fucking seven up or squirt or whatever the off-brand sprite was sprite was um however now i'd say i've fallen back into with certain meal types it's like a big thing of barbecue if i go and get barbecue like load me up with the fucking cream soda or a uh, <laughs> or a root beer or dr pepper like i love like a little kind of like dark soda thing um Beyond that, I don't know. But basically, I'm still, I've appreciated, now I appreciate it as a select no. beverage instead of just a consume. Just consume. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. Like, when you, when you say, though, that like three, like the average person drinks like three cups of soda or whatever per day, like that doesn't surprise me at all. But like comparing it, I would, if going back to like the topic, like what's different about like the US versus at home. <laughs> It's not that different, to be honest. Like, maybe it's not Sprite. Like, they have Sprite, obviously. But, like, I, this is just my opinion. I feel as though a lot of other countries have that, like, replacement drink instead of water. Mm -hmm. And not only the U.S., you know? Like, for example, at home in Indonesia, like, everyone loves sweet tea. Like, like, really, like, really, really, really sweet tea. Like, it'll rot your teeth type of sweet tea and like it replaces water and it's not good but like I now that I think of it like a lot of other like places have that replacement for water and I think it's just because sugar is so addictive and I I don't blame people but (laughs) what's so what moving here when you're 13 now coming full school at DU and stuff how has it been like upkeeping that I guess in terms of travel visa all that sort of stuff, oh, working, going home. <laughs> this topic gives me so much anxiety. Um, <laughs> um, it's, before, it was pretty simple. Like, I would just go home, like, every six months or every year at, like, the least. Um, just because it was so easy with, like, school breaks. Um, and, like, DU, every December, we had, like, six weeks off. So, like, I never felt bad about, like, buying a ticket like it wasn't even my money back then but um I didn't feel like (laughs) I didn't feel bad about buying a ticket if I knew I was going to be there for like a month and a half you know ever since like the pandemic and I have a full-time working job um it's gone a lot harder just because like the most 
like my job is actually very generous with PTO. Um, but I mean, I would just feel guilty taking over two weeks because that's just like, that's already a lot of time. Um, and right now the quarantine period for Indonesia is seven days. So it's like, what point is it worth it to go home? You know, um, that's kind of just like my mindset right now. Um, my sister is getting married in August, so I definitely have to go home. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I should be saying this, but like, I'm at the point where <laughs> I'm at the point where it's like, should I quit my job so I can go home for like two months just because yeah. I haven't been back for so long? You know, it's like, is it worth it to go home just for two weeks when my sister is living? Like, I almost wish that like in the U.S. it was more acceptable. I'm not blaming my job. Don't. <laughs> It's not my job's fault, but I wish it was just more like acceptable to like take longer leave or like I don't know. It's my sister's wedding, you know. I was like talking about the, um, roommate uh, as well. He's kind of in a similar boat where his family was doing this big um, travel thing they're working on for Europe and stuff like that, and he's kind of in the same boat of shoot, I want to go and I think I'm gonna go, but I don't know how to break it to my boss. Yeah. It's like five months away. I just it's like kind of two weeks but it's also kind of a two-month thing where my parents are doing their big sort of excursion um and when we were talking about it the concept that I think also is a little bit now slightly more accepted um slash definitely probably more accepted is also kind of taking legitimate time off and not paid time off but yeah like stepping back from the job because also we get caught in this idea that our employer controls us in some way, but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, like they need you. They need, yeah. they need people who know what they're doing, people who they can trust, people who aren't going to get them sued. Essentially, like they've mm -hmm. built this kind of team and culture under the idea that things are going to get done and they can trust it. But if for you personally and mentally to go and have that experience, I think you also could be taken back by approaching whoever the boss is and being like, listen, I don't need to be paid for this time but I need to like leave and separate myself from yeah, this for sure. and go do family and all that. And then come back two months later and yeah. I'd love to work with you all. I love being here, all this, but, yeah. um, and I think it, it's almost kind of surprising because I've had friends also who are the roommate left jobs to move to um, Austin. And he walked into his boss's thing one day because he needed to like talk basically, but because he got the other job and the guy's like, please don't tell me you're like leaving. He's like, I'm leaving. He's like, we'll like we'll double your pay and he's like yeah sorry like I already accepted this is a new opportunity for me like I'm I'm out of here and it's like again realizing the leverage of your own ability versus mm -hmm. this kind of system above us that we like almost slave away for when yeah. at the same time it's like you're the one providing the value so no I agree it's funny because I never even like thought of that you know like that was never even an option in my head it was always just like oh, like I take my like two week, whatever, mm -hmm. or I just have, I have to quit my job. I never like even like thought to like ask my supervisor if he'd like be willing to do that, which like a great idea. I just like, it's funny <laughs> that it just like never like came to my mind. <laughs> yeah, because it also happened with another, another buddy, um, same thing. He, he actually ended up staying at his current job, but he almost also doubled, almost doubled his pay um, under the same kind of premise of, he got into this leadership role, was drastically underpaid, was bringing super high technical skills to the table, um, as well as management and leadership stuff. And I think was just kind of getting burnt out on it for the pay that it was giving. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you do want to work hard, but if you're working like that hard, that many hours, taking that many yeah. risks and still, um, so he actually got another job, went in, and then they actually negotiated him back and he screwed over the other thing. But it was a similar concept of how much we think we need the employers, which we do. At the end of the day, there's people and companies, mm -hmm. whether it be entrepreneurs or big companies or that um, can help provide jobs. But then it's also ourselves, yourself, anyone being the actual value of the situation, yeah. what it is the company or team or brand is trying to accomplish. Um, yeah, it's a little bit kind of scary, I think, on their side with all of a sudden people start to Leavers. Yeah, I actually saw, I think it was like, I forget which news site it was, um, but it was saying that like um, the end of 2021 had the most uh, turnover in like a decade or something crazy like that. And yeah. I'm not surprised. Um, 
because I feel like people are just like realizing their worth and they're like I'm not dealing with this if like you're not gonna pay me enough which is super fair yeah yeah there's also um I literally talked about this earlier today with someone I gotta kind of double check the fact on the uh, the fact on this but um that UK the UK was making some shift to kind of standardize a more four-day work week um there's also oh, I saw this too yeah yeah, yeah I saw that. yeah and there's also a lot of companies in general that um I think more mid-level startups if that makes sense mm-hmm. would, are I've seen doing this um but it's also yeah a shift in perspective from our own work-life balance to use kind of the general term but that we all yeah. actually have these like lives and passions and things yeah. that we do and we just we don't need there's other people who can also step in maybe it's hiring more people for a little bit less hours each and maybe it is a little less pay and then blank or the same pay for getting the same work done and not just pretending to be working for the last two hours of your shift to say you're there when in reality yeah no that's fair get done and come in early my, tomorrow and- my concern slash my question about that is like will that only like be for people with like nine to five jobs like or like would that put a strain almost on people like service industry people if that makes sense because like their lives don't change they're open like a lot of places are open like 24 7 like would they still be working like a five six day work week versus a four day work week that's like these like nine to five like salary people get you know like this is interesting because I actually think a shift that is not happening quick enough but eventually is kind of the further level of progress as humanity is as we've started to eliminate more basic human needs for the general sense like access to water healthcare, which these are still major problems we need to solve Mm -hmm. but as they've improved over the past many decades we start to shift from this work for necessity into now we're starting to work for entertainment in a way and that's the service industry and we think about the essential workers like from the COVID terms is genuinely this is the world that now is where the value is at of if people are now saved to the four-day work week if that became a reality in the U.S. of no no it's normalized standard now to do the four-day week maybe it's Monday through Thursday but also maybe it's Thursday through Tuesday I don't know the whatever the thing is um there becomes now like little gaps that we have extra time and money that we're now, instead of just working and saving, we're now going out into the economy spending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cycle. That's true. Then there's more people in the service thing side, which could be Uber, driving people places, food, making people things, drinks, going out, the arts, going to concerts and venues or going to purchase extra items that you want to design your home with those kind of things now start to become more of a value and basically people can get actually paid appropriately for them hence cutting down on the hours they need so it's, it's literally yeah. just a shift and we're all already doing work and there should still be a competitive aspect into yeah work hard get paid more or more appropriately um but there's a side to it which is wait a sec why are we just constantly growing bigger economy all mm-hmm. the when it's like wait a sec we need to actually take care of the basic necessities of yeah. health water education and from that point as long as people have access to those most of our life becomes a little bit of progression across each and then just creating art for the sake of loving the creation and then consuming the creation which is through the concerts the food the mm-hmm. going out to things um so i don't know i guess that's where i see more of the direction of a positive future heading the problem yeah. is, is you start to get no that, I would uh, I mean I personally would love a four-day work week I, I can't even imagine for my company though um I mean at least for like a bank like mm-hmm. what like are they gonna like close down the market for one day you know what I mean like markets are open like five days a week so like, this is where, what is, is you... there a future in like the markets being open only four days a week I have a question yeah. would you be willing to get paid a little bit percent less say a fifth less because you're doing a five-day work week a fifth. a fifth less but now you know like essentially you just don't get paid for your friday thing they okay. take the money supplied by every person on your team who's doing that and they bucket that to hire a couple more people 
to then shift from the Tuesday to Friday, or they shift some people Tuesday to Friday. Essentially, the money that they're paying out stays the same. Yeah, but, but you slightly get paid a little less. Like you're a, also working less. Like you have yeah. the freedom and time and all that. Is that something you would want to do? I think if my salary was like a little bit more, I would say a hundred percent yes. But if you were to cut like 20% off my salary, like I would be in debt. <laughs> I don't think I don't think. And, <laughs> and if you were to cut 20% off my salary, like, and I want to be doing things in my like three day weekend, I couldn't because I wouldn't have enough money. So personally, I don't think I like could um, like withhold my lifestyle with 20% less of my salary. Um, but if I was making more and uh, that sounds great, like that sounds awesome. So what if, what if though, you have three days of your life that you can put time towards you take the Friday and the Sunday, Friday and the Saturday morning to now you're cooking food and you're, maybe it's, you're working at a high end restaurant those days, or you're doing your own little side gig where you do cooking classes for people who just want to take their Friday and do a cooking class and learn some stuff or you help just cook them a nice meal and you actually randomly get paid out essentially almost just as much as you get paid out on a cash That's true. Basis for like, yeah. it also shifts that you're not just sitting around watching Netflix for three days, but you still have the hunger to create and do and explore. Yeah. See, that would be different, but I would have to like have that determination instead of like sitting on my butt watching Netflix. Um, but- which like which is possible i just <laughs> need the encouragement you know <laughs> but isn't that also almost a beautiful way to approach it yeah you normalize kind of the even the corporate standard of okay listen we all still live in a society where shit has to get done we have to have basic access to things we need the teachers the water the food shit to get transported sent across the country but then there's this normal culture of but if you want bonus money like if you want you've got your survival money and then you've got your little, yeah. depending on your job, your little extra to do fun things. But if you want like bonus, bonus money, that's where you say, no, fuck it. I want to work seven days a week and at 60 hours. And I want like, now mm-hmm. it kind of creates this genuine capitalism where it's not just sucked into the necessity of the yeah. system we've created for no apparent reason. Like even weekdays are made up versus we hit our standards of what should be a part of our human life given our modern technology but if you start to want to get into extravagant art collection mm-hmm. crazy music experiences producing movies and you have to like that's when you start to have to take the crazy risks and stuff um so i don't know that that's a little bit of like my no i get it cutting back on our standard work hours to create i would love it i would love it at the end of the day yes i would love it no. but i just like can't imagine making 20% less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but yes, um, ideal world, that would be awesome. Um, also, work from home, great. I really hope I don't have to go into office anytime soon. Um, I think it's changed so much of like my life, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I got into like my car crash and like I don't have a car, like, I don't have a ride to go anywhere. Um, especially like that's helped so much just like working from home um and I don't know it's it's awesome I, I can't imagine well, it kind of brings <laughs> up yeah just the commute concept and also even the getting ready for work like having to put on this thing or present yourself in yeah. some way versus no I can still you know throw on a, a nice sweater for example and just be mm-hmm. able to do what I need to versus like feeling as if you had to go in and see people and put on this face all the time uh, yeah I mean there are definitely pros and cons right but like for me personally like the car situation is just such a big thing like I can't afford a new car right now and the fact that, that like I don't need one is just yeah. a game changer yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened with the um so I was just going straight um uh, just minding my own business <laughs> lunch break it was my lunch break and um (laughs) oh I'm so annoyed um it was my lunch break minding my own business going straight speed limit like listening to music having a great time was about to get my pants tailored because they were too long for me 
um silly errand like I didn't even have to go um and then out of nowhere this guy was turning left at like a stop sign um and he didn't like see me um which is bullshit to be honest like there were no cars parked but anyways he didn't see me and he just like went so I hit like the front of his car um Uh, yeah not fun but get like what happened um (laughs) oh such a long thing but um so what happened was um the police was like it's not your fault blah 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 it's the guy's fault don't even file a claim and I was like awesome like this is great like I don't have to do anything and then turns out that like the guy wasn't accepting all fault um like he said that I was like speeding a little bit and I was not um and so he told his insurance company that so his insurance company told me that I have to file my own claim and they're still actually fighting so no update there. <laughs> uh-huh. Even though in the police report it says it's not my fault. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh, <laughs> but that's why, like, I wish good, things good. had better public transport. Like, why is it that I need a car to yeah. live? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, tough. I know there's like the light rail in Denver, but like even that, you got to be in a specific spot to kind of exactly like, get easy access to that. Like I looked up um how to get to my job with like the public transport here with a car. No kidding you, it's like twenty minutes, but with the public transport, it's like an hour and a half more, just because you have to like take a bus to the light rail, and then the light rail you go to another station, and then you take another bus, and it's like this whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway. Well. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, we're, yeah, we've been uh, chatting for a bit here. Um, yeah, is there any other thoughts on stuff? Otherwise, I appreciate you just chatting and um, talking about random shit and food and everything. <laughs> um, pocket change is awesome. Love the concept. Love you guys. <laughs> Love talking about food and aioli and mayo and sandwiches. Well, you should you should share it. In, <laughs> you share it in pocket change stuff. We're actually going. Um, and a little bit too with like even this whole podcast I think it's in part pocket change but in part just my myself doing it under the yeah. idea that the whole goal of what we're trying to do is not just sure that like not just be this charity platform thing which is we've never mm-hmm. been that but from a a way I think people perceive us um it's become that mm-hmm. and so we've seen now over the past many months a shift in like people actually just posting and sharing their more just true authentic self and Mm -hmm. not necessarily this social media version of themselves which I guess you could still say is in there but um we're trying to lean into um have you uh seen the game we're not really strangers no okay well conceptually (laughs) it's just raw questions to actually get to know someone Mm -hmm. um and so yeah, it's just based on a more like authentic connection around what you're really thinking and um, going through and all that sort of stuff. So we're trying yeah. to tap into that, that like all these social platforms have their own cultures in a way. Mm-hmm. What is it that actually builds those? And then what is it that, because there's also, yeah, there's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but then there's, there's still a ton of plenty successful social platforms that have their own sort of vibe to them. Yeah. And so we've been talking like, what is it that we're actually doing here? Like, great. We can always keep the like, charitable under the eye. Like, yeah. 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 It's like at the end of the day, literally for me personally, like my goal is if people can just start to bring that slightly higher level of consciousness. And that doesn't mean some crazy spiritual shit as much as it's mm-hmm. just a little bit of that intentionality into your day. Like thinking about the certain ways you love yourself, how that reflects into people you have relationships with. Are you bringing positive energy forward are you going through shit like just Mm -hmm. coming to the true self and then being okay with the path of discovery that's actually what I think is exciting about the world and what keeps me like (laughs) not wanting to die each day (laughs) and so but genuinely if that's true am I focusing on bringing that forward in the world and if I'm doing a branded company like how is that a part of that um Mm-hmm. so rain aligns with that as well and that's where we've come into this like well, let's just push that shit like yes that can be charitable stuff and there's technicalities to how we organize each of these things but mm-hmm. are we trying to push forward 
a place of comfort and sharing yourself and thinking about things and coming up with perspectives and ideas and respecting others and like finding progress in society and in ourselves in a way you can have both too you know like I feel like that's the perfect thing like to just have like to be like doing something that's good but also like meanwhile just like being comfortable and just like being yourself yeah yeah that's literally and so it's just that and also the reality of myself I like the music stuff and I feel like that's an alternate way under the same mindset which is music to me is a connection point of expression taking people through different worlds and Mm -hmm. um, being present in myself through my own flow of creating it Um, so no matter what you uh, the food thing bring it back Mm -hmm. whole story being able to create food you get lost in on the ingredients you're chopping it up oh no you got the timer you got the thing you're flipping the stuff and all of a sudden you've created yeah. a beautiful piece that you then get to share and talk with others about their day mm-hmm. so um each of these are under the same facet like what makes you happy yeah you know yeah 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 and so this okay. is us just leaning into that further thing and for me personally this is where stuff like this is also just exciting and fun to yeah me. I've just, I just had great I agree. This was awesome. Random shit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's FaceTime more. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. That's, 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 like, the whole thing is I'm like, wait a second. There's so many people in my life who have different exactly. interests about different stuff. And that's just their normal day. And they're not these over glorified people who have. Yeah. Like, everyone's going through some sort of human experience. And that involves glory moments and pain and anxiety. And, dope. and you can only have these like glory moments with these mm-hmm. like lows you know like there's no way you can have like these like great times without experiencing shitty times that's just the reality of life so yeah yeah, yeah. everyone's then, like, going the, through shit that's that's what it is that, what it and is and flow in between are like the beautiful yeah. at the end of the exactly. day that's like we're just living so if you're not appreciating those little day-to-day things then it's like what are you even so i don't know we're just yeah. agreed messing with that concept <laughs> agreed well let me know if you need any help i have that i definitely have the app downloaded i'll Posting more. Yeah, I'll check it out. We got we got some uh, new stuff going, but um, cool. We'll All do. Right, we'll, we'll Have a good one, rest of your Wednesday night. Yeah, 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 definitely. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.